Good morning and welcome to our prayer class. We currently find ourselves in the morning prayers and we are at the last blessing of the 15 blessings um, known as Birch Sashacha, there are 15 blessings, and we're coming to the conclusion of those blessings in the Nusach Ari Siddha. Um, it can be found on page 7. Uh, last time that we studied, we looked at the three blessings of um, Shaloa Sani Goy, Shaloa Sani Aved, and Shaloa Sani Isha, or Shaloa Sani Kirtsono. And we now come to the blessing Baruch Atah Hashem, Alekeinu Melech HaOlam, Hama'avir Sheina Me'enai Usnuma Me'afapai. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who removes sleep from my eyes and slumber from my eyelids. So um, originally this blessing was said after having washed one's hands and then the next step would be to wash the face. We all know that when we go to sleep at night um, and we wake up in the morning the face needs to be refreshed. We've got to wash the face and particularly in the area of the eyes that can um, that can have the sleep that needs to be washed away. But let's look at the wording of this bracha, of this blessing. Actually, when this blessing is said in the shul, normally as the previous blessings are recited, the congregation responds amen to each bracha. When this blessing is recited, the congregation do not respond amen to the bracha because actually it's what's known as a bracha smucha. It's a, um, a longer bracha and the following paragraph is the continuation of the blessing and it ends with the bracha at the end of that. Blessed are you, Baruch Atah Hashem Agoma. So that's actually the conclusion of this bracha, of this blessing. Um, so as we uh, begin our day, so we say, May it be, um, Bless are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who removes sleep from my eyes and slumber from my eyelids. So what's the difference between these two expressions, sleep and slumber? Um, sleep we're familiar with. Slumber is more the concept of drowsiness. Uh, when a person wakes up in the morning, they're grateful. Um, they are grateful to Hashem for waking them up, not only waking them up, but also making them feel awake, taking away the slumber, the feeling of heaviness from, from the eyelids. But as with every bracha that we have studied, with all the blessings that we have studied, there is also a, a deeper meaning to the blessing. And um, we're going to look at the, the deeper meaning to the blessing as well. When we talk about sleep, a person is in a state of sleep. Sometimes a person can actually be awake, but uh, be in a state of sleep. What does that mean to be in a state of sleep? So when a person goes to sleep, their seichel, their intellect is not really working at full capacity. And that's why when a person sleeps, they have... Uh, sometimes they'll have crazy dreams because, because the intellect is not working at full capacity. And, um, and when a person wakes up after they've had such a dream, they realize, oh, it was, it was just a dream. But 
But as the day begins, we thank Hashem for giving us the ability to go away from that sleepy intellect and to keep our intellect awake and to keep sharp and to realize what is reality and what is in fact a, a, a notion that is, is ridiculous. So how does this blessing continue? The blessing continues like this. Vihi ratzom milfanecha. As we get ready to go into the day, we say to Hashem, and may it be your will, Hashem alekeinu, Lord our God, velekeo vaseinu, and God of our fathers, shetar gileinu besora secha, that you accustom us to study your Torah, v'tad bikeinu b'mitzvah secha, and make us cleave to your commandments, v'alta v'yeinu, loli dey chet, v'loli dey avera v'avon, don't bring us into sin, nor into transgression or iniquity. Nor into temptation or scorn. And may the evil inclination not have mastery over us. And keep us far from an evil person, and an evil companion, and make us cleave to the good inclination and to good deeds, and Chol ro einu. And compel us, compel our inclination to be subservient to you. Grant us this day and every day grace, kindness, and mercy in your eyes and in the eyes of all who behold us and bestow bountiful kindness upon us. And then we conclude Baruch Atta Hashem Hagomel Chasadim Tovim Lamo Yisrael. Blessed are you, Lord who bestows bountiful kindness upon his people, Israel. So, when a person wakes up in the morning, immediately upon awaken, awakening, right, when we're supposed to say, Modeh Ani, Hasidus explains that at that moment, at that moment, when we first wake up, we have a clarity. That's the mode ani. When we wake up in the morning, we say mode ani lefanecha. I give thanks to you, or I recognize you, Hashem, shechazarta bi nishmasi, that you've returned to my soul, my nesham, and I'm grateful for that. And we conclude with the words Rabba emunasecha. Great is your faithfulness. And it's explained, one of the explanations, what are we talking about the faithfulness that we are thanking Hashem for is the faith that Hashem has in each and every single one of us. That the moment we wake up in the morning, even before we wash our hands, we're thanking Hashem that he has faith in us. Now, what is this faith that Hashem has in us? It is apparent in the fact that God woke me up in the morning. Why am I here? What am I doing in this world? Why did Hashem give my neshama back to me? He gave it back to me because he has faith that I am going to fulfill God's desire in having a dwelling place in a physical world. And to that end, God created this entire world and all the upper worlds as well. And within that world, God put each and every single one of us. And God says, without your contribution, the desired effect, my vision of this world will be incomplete. 
So we wake up in the morning and right away, that is our thought process. That is the clarity of mind that we have. And that's what, what we say over here. We bless Hashem. We thank Hashem. And we say thank you for returning. Uh, uh, th thank you, Hashem, who removes sleep from my eyes and slumber from my eyelids. Now, if we're going to be honest, we, uh, we, we, will, we will look into our day every day. And we will find that somehow or other, this clarity that we had as soon as we woke up in the morning, sometimes might disappear. But we had that clarity right away when we woke up in the morning. And therefore, we have where to go back to that moment of clarity. And why does that clarity disappear? So this bracha, this blessing clarifies that. Why does it disappear? Because as we begin the day, Hashem doesn't make it easy. There are many stumbling blocks that come into our path that make the challenge of keeping our sight and our vision of what we're supposed to be doing during the day. And not only that, but having the confidence to know that we're up to the task, that we can accomplish that, that vision. And that's what happens. The, 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 this blessing is where we ask Hashem, we say to Hashem, we had that moment of clarity. That was when we said the Moda Ani. And so great is that clarity. That's why we say the Moda Ani even before we wash our hands, because that's such a holy and bonding moment between a Jew and Hashem that when they wake up in the morning, they have that clarity of our whole purpose, our whole reason of having been created, our whole reason of existence. And then the day begins. Then the day begins starts what is what happens that that makes it difficult for the day to start what happens is the first thing we say to Hashem is make us cleave to your commandments the fact that we want to connect to Hashem and want to be connected to God, the only way to connect to Hashem is through the Torah and through the mitzvahs. It's not a given. Why? Because we also have a Yetzirah. We have an evil inclination. And the evil inclination comes to disturb our our desire to be close to Hashem. That's the concept of free choice. And that evil inclination, that Yetzahara, is coupled together with the Yetzatov. We have a good inclination. Now, the good inclination, the good inclination, the Yetzatov, is what inspires us to connect to Hashem, to connect to God, to want to be connected and to want to learn Torah. And sometimes in our life, the Yetzirah Tov is more powerful than the Yetzirah, than the evil inclination. And when the Yetzirah Tov is more powerful than the Yetzirah, so then we are able in a much easier way to navigate life because we have that clarity, because we connect ourselves to Torah. But that's not something that we must take for granted. We have to realize that to overpower the Yetzirah, to overpower the evil inclination, is something that is very, very difficult. And we cannot accomplish that without God's help, without the help of Hashem. So that's the first thing we say to Hashem. 
as the day begins and we're still closely connected to that first experience that we had, as soon as we wake up, we say to Hashem, keep me focused, keep me on that path. Don't, don't allow the Yetzahara, don't allow the evil inclination to overpower me. And don't bring me to an opportunity of sin or iniquity or temptation or scorn. Sometimes we see the actions of other people and we might be very quick to judge and to say, how could they do something like that? How could they... Uh, how could they sin in such a way? I would never do something like that. In Pirukei Avos, in Ethics of the Fathers, which now we are um, studying every Shabbos, we're supposed to study Ethics of the Fathers during the long summer Shabbos. One of the teachings of the sages is, Al todin es chavercha ad komo. Don't judge your fellow until you are in their shoes, until you're in their place. And when are you going to be in their place? Never. Because never does any person have exactly the same set of circumstances as another person. We don't know if we were given the same set of circumstances as someone else, how would we respond in that given situation? And therefore, we're not supposed to judge another person. And we certainly shouldn't take for granted every day or every moment of every day that Hashem grants us the kindness that we should remain on the straight and narrow, that we should not succumb to temptation. And even though it's very interesting, we know that Avram Avinu, the first Jew, Avraham, Abraham our father, the first of the patriarchs, Hashem tested him 10 times. And he came through every single one of those tests. And why did Hashem test him? Again, in Ethics of the Fathers, we are taught, why did Hashem test Avram Avinu? He tested him to show how great is the love that Avram Avinu has for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that Abraham has for God. And the fact that our father Abraham went through all these different kinds of tests is very important to us because we contain his DNA. We are his children. And Hashem, through that testing that Abraham had, and he passed the test, didn't God know that Abraham loved him? Of course, Hashem knows everything. And didn't he know that he would overcome those tests? Absolutely, Hashem knew that he would overcome those tests. But it was necessary for Abraham Avinu, the father of of the Jewish nation to actually go through those tests and to overcome those tests. So now it's in our DNA. It is part of who we are, that we have that ability to overcome any test that Hashem may throw our way. Now, if that's the case, then why don't we say also let Hashem give us tests? Because we love Hashem. But we don't do that. Every morning when we daven, we say to Hashem, don't bring us into sin, nor into transgression or iniquity, nor into temptation or scorn. And may the evil inclination not have mastery over us. Why? Because we understand that we don't want to tempt fate because we do have a Yetzirah, because we do have an evil inclination. We know actually that David HaMelech, King David, asked Hashem to send temptation his way and asked him to put him in a situation to test him. And ultimately, he was not able to overcome that test. 
So we do say to Hashem every day, don't bring me to that moment that the temptation will be too great or the test will be too great or the situation will lend itself that my response will be anything less than dignified and godly and good. And this could be in any kind of situation. We've all had moments where we look back on our reaction to a certain situation where we feel less than proud of how we reacted and how we responded. And the truth of the matter is, we say to ourselves at such a time, I wish I wouldn't have had such an interaction because that response was not becoming how I responded, whether it was in anger or whether it, it, or whether it was in, in, in any less than dignified way, if I hadn't had that encounter or that situation hadn't come to my way, I wouldn't have responded in that way. So that's why every morning after our time of clarity that we had initially, when we first woke up in the morning, before we hit the snooze button, the initial waking up, we come and we pray to Hashem and we say to Hashem, let me keep that clarity throughout the day. And if I'm to keep that clarity, then I need you, Hashem, to make sure that everything that happens during the day will not lead me to respond in a way other than is a reflection of the Torah and the connectedness to Hashem that um, that is that is reflecting in my behavior. So it's important for us to realize that even though overpowering the negative forces in the world is a great feat, it's something that is very, very difficult. So then maybe that should cause us to give up and to say, well, it's too difficult. No, what we have to realize and the sages teach us is that if we put in our little bit of effort, then Hashem, God, helps us to accomplish very great things. And it's important for us to realize that every time we overpower the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, we strengthen the Yetzirah, we strengthen the good inclination. And that's really how the balance between the good and the evil in the world works. It's like a, it's like a jeweling, it's like a jewel. If you, if you think of a, a, of a wrestling match, when one is on top, the other is underneath. And it's a match, right? So sometimes one, one of the wrestlers is stronger and the other one is weaker and at other times the other way. And that's how it is with the Yetzirah, with the evil inclination. The Alter Rebbe explains in the Tanya that when we strengthen our Yetzirah even momentarily, it strengthens good in the world at large, which, ultim which automatically weakens the evil in the world at large. So not only is it a victory that is personal, not only do we strengthen our Yetzirah, our good inclination, but we strengthen good in the world at large. And so too, the same is, uh, is true with the opposite, that when we um, succumb to our evil inclination, then the opposite happens to the good. So a a, a victory over the Yetzirah, over the evil inclination, a personal victory over the evil inclination has global impact. And even though it's a very difficult feat, in fact, it's almost an impossible feat, Hashem says, I've got your back. 
You do your part. You put your best foot forward and I will carry you the rest of the way. So, um, so here we have the, the Torah actually, we say that when a person sins, why does a person sin? A person sins, the sages tell us, only when a ruach shtus entered their mind. When a moment of folly enters a person's mind. So when does a moment of folly enter a person's mind? When they're fashlofen, right? In Yiddish, we call it fashlofen. What's fashlofen? When a person is sleepy, that's when there's an opportunity for folly to enter their mind. So now we see it makes perfect sense. This bracha that begins with, who removes sleep from my eyes and slumber from my eyelids and goes on to ask Hashem to create an environment for us and to help us remain in that state of sharp awareness of what we are doing here and what we are here to accomplish and to help us navigate the pitfalls that may come into our way and the temptations that try to keep us away from, from doing what we're supposed to do, from keeping the Torah and mitzvahs. Now, there's something very interesting. We start off with, the, with, with, um, with this bracha, with this blessing, we switch... Um, and we, we find ourselves talking in the plural over here. We say, may it be your will, Lord our God and God of our fathers, that to accustom us to study Torah and to make us cleave to your commandments. Don't bring us to sin. We're talking here in the plural even though we are an individual davening to God. We are an individual making a petition to Hashem. We're making petitions to Hashem. We're recognizing and thanking God for good. So why now, as we're praying over here, do we find that the prayer is addressed in the plural? And from here we see a very basic characteristic in Jewish prayer. And that is what? That is, as Abaya said, always include the community in your prayers. And Rashi explains, why should we do this? Because this will make our prayer acceptable to Hashem. And that's why whenever possible, whenever it makes sense, we'll notice that the prayers are written in the plural. We have a, a, a fast day. We say, uh, we add to the prayer, Anenu, Anenu biyom som tani senu. Answer us, Hashem, on the day of our fast. We don't assume that we're the only one fasting. We're part of a community. And other people are fasting as well. When we pray, on a journey to fill us haderech. We ask, Yehi Ratzamu Fanech Hashem Elekeinu Velekei Avaseinu. We say, God of our fathers, that you should protect us in the plural as we go on our journey. We never think of ourselves as living on an island. We always have to think of others and the welfare of others and not just about ourselves. And when we come to Hashem, and we ask Hashem for prayers and we ask Hashem for help that we shouldn't just think about ourselves, but we should think about others. And when we think about others, that makes our prayers um, beautiful in the eyes of Hashem. That's why in a, in a, in, in a couple of weeks, we'll get to the, the place in the prayer where before we launch into the morning prayers, we're still at the blessings, we have a prayer, Hareini makabel alai mitzvah sasei shalva hafta l'reacha kamocha. 
I take upon myself the commandment of loving my fellow as I love myself. Because I want my prayers to be beautiful before God. What do I say to God? I say to Hashem that I care and I love for all your creations, for all your people that you have created. I care about them. You know, when you love somebody and somebody else expresses their appreciation of that person, how does it make you feel? It makes you feel warm towards that person. And the opposite is also true. When somebody says something disrespectful about somebody you care about, it creates a negative feeling towards that person. So as we come to Durban, as we come to pray, we, we realize that community building is a very important part of our life. And therefore, as we come to pray, we don't just think about ourselves. We think about others at the same time. That we have a great responsibility to not only fulfill our personal journey in life, but what is our personal journey in life? It's really about the klal. It's really about the community. So everything we're asking Hashem for, personally, why are we asking for it? We're asking it and we're realizing that it's because we live in a community. We live in a world we're not merely living selfish lives and asking God to fulfill our personal needs. And even when we are asking for our personal needs, it is so that we can make this world more beautiful, more loving, more bright, more hopeful. And that's why we find that, um, that there needs to be compassion even when we're making a personal prayer if we come to Hashem with compassion then Hashem mirrors that compassion right back to right back to us and that's why um, that's why it's important to keep others in mind you know we're, we're, we're also studying the book of Tehillim on Monday mornings, we're going through the book of Psalms. And we see this theme runs through the entire book of Psalms. That when King David wrote the Psalms, even though many of the Psalms were written during personal difficulties or personal joy that King David was experiencing, but actually every single one of those Psalms he had in mind the entire community, that it wasn't just about himself, that he was asking Hashem for help for Klal Yisrael, that he was asking Hashem for help for the community, not just for himself. And that when he experienced joy, he envisioned the community, the rest of the nation, the rest of the world experiencing that joy as well. It's important for us to realize that we are one people. You know, there's a very interesting request that we ask for in this prayer. We say to Hashem, okay, so it, we understand now that we want to keep the clarity that we had in the morning and we want to stay on the straight and narrow. And that's why we ask Hashem, to um, help us to want to connect to his mitzvahs and to keep us away from temptation. But then at the end, something very interesting we ask Hashem for. We say to Hashem, hayom yom, that he should grant to us this day and every day l'chein or l'chesed or l'rachamim grace, kindness, and mercy. What is the meaning of the fact that we're asking Hashem for grace? So there are 
there are different explanations. Some say that um, um, what, is, what is the meaning of grace? The meaning of grace is that others should find us pleasant. People should want to be around us. Why? Because they feel good in our presence. So it makes sense that we ask Hashem Lechein that we should have grace in your eyes, in the eyes of Hashem. But why do we ask Hashem that he should give us grace in the eyes of all who see us? Why does it matter what somebody else thinks about me? You know, we live in... We live in a society, actually, where, where people will say, you know, I don't care what somebody else thinks about me. Let them think whatever they want to think, right? Let's give them something to talk about. But here we see, no, we ask Hashem that not only should we find grace in the eyes of God, but we should find grace in the eyes of all people who see us. Meaning that people should find us attractive. Now, why is that important? Why is it important that people should find us attractive? Actually, Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon, says in his, in, in his song of Eishas Chayel, Sheker HaChein, that beauty is vain. Grace is vain, actually. That beauty and, and grace are vain. And yet here, we're asking Hashem that people should find us attractive. So, grace is something that is exterior. When we look at a person, sometimes... We can feel attracted to that person. Or sometimes we can feel the opposite. We can feel repulsed by seeing a person. But really and truly, what is chain? Chain is something that is an expression that is visible on a person's face that is expressing something from the inside. So a person can have a very attractive face and a person can feel drawn to be around that person because the face is very pleasant and it's very beautiful. But they don't know the person. And then they can get to know that person. And if that face is a reflection of something from the inside that is very ugly. You know, in Hebrew, a face is called a panim. Panim is a face. Panim means panimi. It means inside. That the face is a reflection of the inside, of the essence of a person. So when Shlomo HaMelech says, sheker hachein vehevel hayofi, that grace and beauty are nothing and vain, what he's saying is beauty and, and chain and grace are nothing when there is nothing inside that is reflecting the beauty. And in fact, when a person gets to know a person whose inside is filled with ugliness, then no longer do they find that person attractive anymore. That's how it's possible for people to fall in and out of love. Because the truth is, they never fell in love to start with. They fell in lust. They found the person's physique, the exterior, attractive. What they forgot was that the panim, that the face, which the face denotes the concept of something on the face, the exterior needs to be connected to an interior that is beautiful. 
We said that we wake up every morning with the clarity that we are here to create a dira patachtonim, to create a dwelling place for God in this world. That we are here to reveal godliness. And we want to keep that focus throughout the day. Therefore, it is important what others think about us because we are here to make an impact on the world, which automatically makes an impact on others. And therefore, we ask Hashem that when I meet a person on a daily basis, all the people I meet, that every single interaction should be an opportunity to have an impact, that the person can look at me and say, I want to hang around that person. Why? Because that person reflects the godliness that is within. Each one of us has a neshama, has a soul. What is that neshama? What is that soul? That soul is a piece of God. It's a piece of Hashem. And every day, our purpose here is to connect to that essence of ourselves, but not for selfish purposes. Not so that I become bigger and I become better and I become more elevated so that I can receive a beautiful portion in the world to come. No, it's so that I might fulfill my very purpose in this world, which is God's vision of this world being a godly place, of this world being a place that Hashem dwells in. And it, that's our job. Our job is to reveal the godliness in this world. And that's why it's important that we ask that people should find us attractive, that we should have that chain, we should have that grace in the eyes not only of Hashem, and in Pirkei Avos also, the ethics of the fathers. How do you know whether your actions are good? So the sages tell us all that finds, that Hashem finds beautiful, but only not only that God finds beautiful, but also that other people around you find beautiful. If your behavior is good, not only to Hashem, but also to the people around you, then you know that your behavior is godly and your behavior is good because we are not living in a vacuum. We're living in a world filled with people. And the Baal Shem Tov taught that Hashem can send an Ashama, a soul down to this world for 70 or 80 years just to do a favor for another person. And so we conclude this bracha, this blessing, and we say, Bless are you, Hashem, Hagomel Chasadim Tovim La Amo Yisrael, who bestows bountiful kindness upon his people Israel. And what specifically is that kindness that we are talking about? We are talking about the privilege that Hashem has given to us to be a light unto the nations, to have a day every single day, no matter what's going on in our day, no matter what's happening, that we live with this purpose. The purpose doesn't change. The scenery might change. The situation might change, but the purpose never changes changes. Lasos dira zu betachtonim, that we are here to create a dwelling place for Hashem, a dwelling place for God. And we thank God every single day that he helps us in any way that we need to be able to fulfill that purpose and that mission. And then we continue um, in this Siddur, it's on page 8, and we ask Hashem, Yehi 
Ratzon Milfanecha. And here we have to become uh, 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 um, a little bit focused on our own personal selves. Always remembering, though, and that's why we're going to talk this bracha, this Yehi Ratzon, this plea of Hashem is going to be more singular. We're more talking about ourselves, but not for selfish reasons. We've already ascertained that even when it's in the singular, we have to understand and realize that it's about the greater good of the world. And so we say, Yehi Ratzon Milfanecha, Hashem Alakai Velakei Avasai, May it be your will, Lord my God and God of my fathers. It's important in as much as God is the God of the entire world, it's important for every single one of us to have a personal relationship with God, to realize that Hashem is my God. He's interested in my welfare. He is he is fashioning my day and every situation personally. It's not that Hashem is showering an aura upon the world and I happen to be in that, with that world. And if I'm lucky, I'll catch some of the magic dust that day. And if maybe I'm not having such a lucky day, I'll fall under the dust that brings me difficulty. No, no. We believe in divine providence every thing that happens is tailor-made for every single individual and not just for every individual, the Baal Shem Tov teaches, but actually for every part of creation. So may it be your will, Lord my God and God of my fathers, Shetatsileni hayom yom, that you save me, you protect me this day and every day. May Aze Ponim from insolent people or may Azus upon him, and from impudence. There are impudent people, and there is impudence, and both of these things impact me. Because if I become impudent, then I no longer represent the godliness that's really inside of me. So, if I encounter somebody who's impudent, that person is a denier of God. And when a person denies God, that's when it, they allow themselves to behave in an, an ungodly way. May Adam Ra, I ask Hashem to protect me from an evil person. We don't know who is wicked. And we don't know when a person's wickedness is going to surface. So we ask Hashem, please protect us. Or may Chavah Ra, and from an evil companion. The evil companion our sages say is not just another person, but the evil companion is also our Yetzahara, our evil inclination. And why is the Yetzahara called a companion? Because actually we need the, the Yetzahara, we need the evil inclination, we need the Nefesh Abahamis, we need the animalistic soul. It has its purpose and it can be used for good, but it's a double-edged sword. So we ask Hashem to protect us from it, or mishochein ra, and from an evil neighbor. When somebody lives around us is evil, we might say, so what? So they're evil. As long as they don't hurt others, let them live an evil life. But there's no such thing. A person who is evil brings evil to those who are around them. And the opposite is also true. When we live in a good area with good neighbors and good friends, that impacts us as well. So we ask Hashem to, to protect us or me pegara and from an evil occurrence, me ayin hara, from the evil eye, me loshan hara, from gossip, this week's Torah portion, is something that we should look at and study in the Torah portion this week. Tazriya Metzorah, we learn about the law of Tzara'as. In biblical times, when a person gossiped, they became afflicted with a physical illness, but that physical illness had a spiritual source. So if a person gossiped or talked negative about somebody, 
regardless of whether it was true or not, there was a violent reaction because the soul was so sensitive that it reacted. We live in a time where speech is not given the kind of respect that it deserves. Speech is very powerful. God created the world with 10 utterances. And if speech can create an entire world, then we have to understand that speech can be used in an incredible way to build worlds and to build goodness and kindness and to create revelation because speech actually is revelation. When we speak, we are revealing that which is in our mind. And when we say good things, so that reveals that there is something good in our mind. And when a person says something that is negative, that is showing a revelation of something that needs fixing within the person. So in biblical times, in the time that the temple stood, when the neshamas, when the souls were very, very sensitive, when a person, a Jew, would speak Losh and Hara, there would be, when they would speak, they would gossip. There would be an immediate response. Um, this is something that is, uh, is very important for us to learn about what is considered Losh and Hara or Motsi Shemra, that we, that we defame a person or gossip about a person. And we might say, so what? Who cares? What's the difference? No, actually, the Torah tells us that when we speak, our words are powerful and that everything we say becomes crystallized. There's no such thing as a word that goes into the vacuum. So if we see this to the negative, that negative words have a negative impact, how much more so do positive words have an impact? So prayer and Torah study and words of kindness and encouragement and love and using our words to pick each other up and to reveal the godliness and the goodness that is in each and every one of us. So we ask Hashem to protect us from Losh and Hara because Losh and Hara doesn't only create a negative impact on the person who speaks Losh and Hara, but it impacts negatively the one who hears Losh and Hara, and it impacts negatively the one about whom the Losh and Hara is spoken, the gossip is spoken. And therefore, we have to be very, very careful with our speech. We should realize that with positive speech, we can build worlds. And that's why we ask Hashem to protect us from Losh and Hara. We don't need to be protected from our own Losh and Hara. That we can work on ourselves. That's why Hashem gave us two, two gates around our mouth. So our eyes have a gate, the eyelids, we close them. Our ears have our lobes. If we don't want to listen, we close them. Our mouth has two gates. It has the lips and it has the teeth because it's very difficult for us sometimes to close our mouths when we need to close them. But that is in our power. But what about if somebody else is talking negatively about me and I don't know about that? That negativity has a negative impact on me. So I ask Hashem to protect me, A, from speaking Lash and Hara, and B, if, God forbid, somebody else is speaking Losh and Hara about me or slander. You know, when we say something negative about somebody or about their business, we can say something very innocently, not realizing how detrimental our words can be to another person. Um, but the truth is, really, we have to work on where that speech is coming from, because speech is a revelation of what's in my mind. So really, I have to work on thinking positive. And to that end, we should remember, think good 
and it will be good because our thoughts are very powerful. And when we take our good thoughts and we bring them to a level of revelation, to speech, that is very powerful. And wouldn't we much rather have a positive impact on people in their life, to speak positive things about them? Or at worst case scenario, if we don't have something nice to say, to hold ourselves back and to not say something negative about another person. So we ask Hashem to save us, me, me, me aid us, Sheke, from false testimony. We know that at any given time, somebody could bring a false testimony against a person. And all of a sudden, the person is stuck in a system that they never asked to be in. And we have to remember everything is in God's hands. We always pray to Hashem and ask us to protect us from these things. Misinas habrios from men's hate, and we know that hate is a terrible thing. Hate brings about destruction. Mialila, mimisa mashuna, from unnatural death. Mecholayim raim, from harsh diseases. Umimikrim raim, and from misfortune. Umisatan hamashchis, and from the destructive adversary. Or me din kosher and from a harsh judgment, or me bal din kosher, and from a a person who comes to accuse one who is very harsh, ben shahu ben baris, whether he is a member of the covenant or ben shaino ben baris, or whether he is not a member of the covenant, and finally, or me dina shal gehinam and the retribution of gehinam. I think this is a prayer, these last two prayers that we just looked at, that we could spend days analyzing every single one of these requests, requests that we have of God. Suffice it to say that these blessings, that these requests that we have of Hashem, we shouldn't take for granted. We shouldn't take for granted the fact that God says, pray to me. I want you to pray to me. I want you to ask me for these things. When? Whenever you want. Whenever we want, we are allowed to ask Hashem. And just in these two requests, these two Yehi zones, may it be your will, there are so many powerful and beautiful requests that we can ask for Hashem. And most of all, it gives us the realization that we are not alone here in the world, that we are in Hashem's hands, that God has got our backs, and that we should realize everything that happens comes from Hashem. It's for our good. It's for our journey. And we ask Hashem every day to show us revealed blessings so that what? So that we may be found gracious in the eyes of others so that when we go through our day, not only does Hashem see that we are reflecting the essence that he has put into us, but that others also see that we have an opportunity to create a Kiddush Hashem, a sanctification of God's name, and that is what our purpose is here in this world. I want to wish everybody a wonderful week. God should answer all of our prayers. God should shine his chain, his grace upon all of us, upon the entire world and heal the world from all that is lacking in this world and all that creates darkness in this world. And we should be privileged to be a part of that light and a part of that healing and a part of that love. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.